As someone of you pointed out, we have left a few sections out from the first video. You can find them here. You can find also the original location written over here. We're going to be telling you how to use Dropout to fight overfitting, how to interactively debug your network, and then how to choose the best batch size for classification. Let's say we are overfitting. What do we do? Then you have to figure out where your model was best before it overfitted. Yeah, yeah. So pull can, that version of the model. We can yeah, you can that. save checkpoints, basically. Or we can also just add a dropout, right? So I can just do here uh, inside this guy, I can just drop some units. So reload is going to be setting to zero everything that is negative, right? But I also can set to zero something that is positive. So I can do dropout. Uh, I just said, you know, 1%. Um, one tenth, sorry, one tenth of the of the neurons are going to be set to zero, even though they are positive, like irrespectively, if they are positive or negative, this guy here is going to be setting uh, things to zero, right? So this usually is necessary uh, here if we are, um, if you are overfitting, we were not overfitting, but you know, never, nevertheless, we can do it here. If we are overfitting, uh, also, dropout is super cool because you can use it for uh, many interesting uh, things later on. But never, nevertheless, I just let's try this one, right? So uh, let's go with just the standard way of using dropout. So this guy, I have uh, just started this one. I already I had to go again new uh, new parameters here because I have a new model. The loss is the same. Training validation things are the same. Let's move. Can, can I move this stuff above? because I don't want it here. Let's put it before the model. Okay, there you go. Um, okay, so what do we have to do? Um, I think uh, I, I think I had to do like, uh, before starting my training step here, I had to say model, go in train configuration. And then I had to say, before doing the validation step, hey model, go to, evaluation what does it do this stuff so train uh, make sure that the model it's in a, has its uh, dropout uh, active right so sets the module in training mode uh, this has any effect on only uh, on uh, only on certain modules for example dropout right is the one i just in introduced right now so in this case i'd like my dropout to drop neurons during training. That's why I have this model trained. But as you can see, every time I add something, then I had to start patching my code here and there because uh, there are like hidden, uh, you know, you, you know, you need to know a lot of things before getting this stuff right, I think. <laughs> so I think uh, there is like a very high steep uh, learning curve at the beginning, right? Because it's like, how the beep do you know you had to do this, right? Yeah. Yeah. My experience. Uh, okay, so we have this guy, model train, blah, 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 everything is the same. Oh, oh, you watch my lessons, right? I explain everything there. Uh, and then we do model eval here, which is turning off this guy, right? So uh, whenever we do the dropout at the training mode, since I turn off, in this case, uh, one tenth of my neurons, I'm going to boost the values of the 90% of the other neurons such that they reach like the same total uh, strength of when they are all active, right? So, uh, so if I turn off 10%, I'm going to get like 90% of power. So I have to divide um, all the neurons activations uh, after, the, the, after the dropout by 0 0.9, right? So uh, you basically increase if you divide by 0 0.9, you increase, you know, a little bit the values. So this is the dropout in training mode. So it's going to be setting to zero, some of them, and the others are scaled by one over 0 0.9. And 0 0.9 is the <laughs> one minus 0 0.1. Yeah, I know. Sorry, too much shit going on. Um, and the other one is going to be here. Evaluation mode instead just removes the dropout entirely. So it just, it, be, it becomes like an identity function. Um, so all neurons are active and they are all happily not changed in, in, a, in amplitude. 
cool. Uh, I can start retraining this guy. Uh, maybe I can save this one for later. Copy. See, I have to do this because I don't know how to save. How do you add markdown? Cancel. Um, you can uh, you can do a plus text instead of plus code at the top left. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, there you go. Okay. Oh, okay, okay. Awesome. Okay, let's try. Run. Boom. Oh, disaster. Okay, let's let's make. Yeah, code. on the on the drop out on the on the eval and train. I think the other one is patch storm that will you know enable and disable it based on whether it's eval and train. Um, and I believe there are other ones as well, but I think the most common ones are batch norm and, and dropout. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So again, these uh, eval and train are used for like you can use them if you define if you create your own model, uh, which needs different kind of behavior um, during training and evaluation, right? So you can uh, use you, you can expect the user. Huh. So it's funny because you cannot really expect the user to use this train and eval, right? Uh, like if I, if, I if I wouldn't have used the dropout, I wouldn't have used the eval and train, right? Uh, and so if someone creates a module which expects me to use eval and train, it would not actually work, right? Unless I know that that module requires me to do. Yeah, and I, you know, the, the hard part about doing deep learning with PyTorch uh, like, like this, it's like, you ha it's like, if someone doesn't tell you this, your train, your stuff will work and like it'll train, but you don't have a lot of issues um, that you won't necessarily be able to see up front. Mm -hmm. So it's like, you have to have all these caveats. Like you said, like you have to know these details or. Yeah, I think you, you need to know everything. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. So the loss here went down to 23 and 28, right? Ha. Huh. Okay. Uh, although these are completely, uh, very minimal differences and it's i think 99.9% .9 due to you know random random seeds we got actually a lower validation error right so we got 0 0.23 and here we got 24 perhaps due to the dropout and we actually got a slightly higher uh, training loss again these are so tiny these differences that are i i would assume them are due to the actual random uh, fluctuations, right, of the initialization. But nevertheless, it shows that we applying dropout, we actually <laughs> went to the right direction. Uh, not sure if I run again, I'm going to have the same result. Yeah, so in real life, I guess, this model, I would continue to train it, right, because it's really not overfitting yet. So you want to, once you see that training loss dip between the validation loss and you, then you start to know that it's a problem. And then the question becomes, when do you stop? Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So other things we should do actually, since it's classification, um, we should actually compute the accuracy, right? And that would be very nice. Uh, let's see if we can do that. So if I want to compute the accuracy, how do I do that? So I can compute the average accuracy per um, epoch, right? And let's do this maybe. And this is the last thing I'm gonna do, I think, if... Uh, if it's okay, I think. Uh, let me think. Um, so here we have these logits, right? So the logits are the output of this model. And so the highest logit, so these logits are going inside a soft max, is called, which is actually a soft arg max in a proper uh, thing. But again, if you, if you want to learn about soft max and soft arg max, just check my course. But again, um, it's just a softer version of an arg max. That's why it should be called soft argmax but again these lo uh, logits go inside some function that are mapping them from uh, they making them such that the sum of all of these uh, values are going to be summing to one and all of them are from zero to one so they're making they're converting them into a pseudo probability but again i don't care about this uh, for checking the accuracy right accuracy i can check um, i can check whether the the maximum uh, value match the label, right? Uh, so how do we do that? So let's open a, um, let, let's do something very hacky because I don't know, I didn't prepare this in advance. So we do import pdb and then pdb dot set trace here, right? Such that I can run this guy and I'm 
over here, right? And this is super cool. So uh, yesterday I was talking to one of my students. He's like, oh, so how do you debug? Do you put like pre print statements or do you use any other option? I make like, print statements. I was doing that when I was using Lua and Torch like eight years ago. Uh, <laughs> We, we have Python, we have like visual uh, debuggers. I'm like, why would you want to hurt yourself? Okay, maybe people are sadistic. I am, so I'm, no, masochist, right? Uh, I'm sadistic. <laughs> I, I like to inflict pain, but okay. <laughs> All on, right. on, the, on the students learning deep learning. <laughs> yeah, of course. That's, that's why I teach, right? You, now you know my secret. Um, okay, so what... Now I just got this PDB here, such that we have like a um, interactive interpreter at this point, right, in the code, such that I can actually look into this uh, model output, right? So first thing I'm gonna check, what is my logit size, right? What do you expect this to be? Uh, batch, oh, so 32 by 10. Right, doesn't work. Oh, it hasn't been defined yet, you gotta... Oh wait, go back. Is no, it, no, I think it's gonna point? be no, no. I think it's gonna be print. Oh no, no. You need a no. Sorry, you need a um, exclamation mark and then L dot size because L is a command in PDB for li for like listing where you yes, are. Yes, yes, I can do P dot uh, P space L dot size. Oh, okay, great. P that it means print. There you go. Nice. So I have thirty two batches and ten. Uh, so this is a matrix, right? Height is thirty two. And then I have th uh, 10 columns, such that if I pick any of the rows, I'm gonna get one of my logit thing, right? So let's check, for example, print my logit for the first element, which is element zero, right? And so this one is gonna, is gonna give us the first uh, row of this matrix, right? And which has these numbers inside, minus four, minus six, uh, minus zero, two, three, minus three, and so on, 7.5. Minus one, minus one, minus plus one, one, seven. So it looks like zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Aha. Uh -huh. This is so cool, right? This is a four, which really looks like a nine. <laughs> <laughs> it's so cool, right? Uh, and guess, <laughs> guess what? If you apply that uh, soft argmax, I'm going to tell you, like if you do argmax here, what do you get, right? You're going to get the number four, right? So uh, if I do p dot l zero, I'm, I'm going to be actually detaching because I don't want to uh, keep uh, that. Can you, scroll, can you scroll down a bit? Yeah. Nice. No, no, sorry, go back. Just, I couldn't see the bottom of the screen. Oh, oh up. Okay, sorry. Okay. Yeah, great. Uh, I hope people can see the whole screen. Yeah. Oh, you invert your mouse. Yeah. I, I, for me, down is this way, I guess. <laughs> uh, oh, because I'm using a mouse. I look, look, I'm using this stuff here, right? So I'm, okay, never mind. <laughs> um, so I detach. So I remove this graph. I don't want to, to get the, the thing in the way. Uh, and then I do a argmax. Does it exist? Argmax. Argmax. Four. See? Fantastic. So four means one, two, zero, one, two, three, four. So this is a number four, right? But again, we, if you apply just an argmax, you don't see exactly that. So if you just check the highest value of your output, you wouldn't know which uh, value is the, uh, so have, you don't really know also, the similarities, right? Huh? Yeah, can we also talk about why these are negatives and why these are not probabilities? Yes, yeah, so this is the output of the, the logit, right? So this is the output of this layer here, the linear. So the linear simply maps my uh, dropped out uh, hidden layer, which is gonna be just staying in this top quadrant in this 64 dimensional space because all the negative uh, quadrants are getting uh, killed by the ReLU. Um, and then this thing is uh, mapped through an, an affine transformation back to a 10 dimensional space, right? So uh, with, you know, positive negative values from minus infinity to plus infinity, it doesn't have any kind of limitation. Uh, this thing goes inside this softer version of an argmax I'm gonna show you right now. Inside, so inside this loss, we actually have two components. There is this soft uh, argmax and then there is like a, 
uh, we compute the 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 minus logarithm of that uh, of the value corresponding to the correct position. Again, uh, if you don't know, so, what I'm, yeah. So this uh, this model hasn't learned anything, though. No? This is the first batch because we just restarted the loop. Mm, I restarted the loop, but then the model is the same. I didn't I didn't reset it, right? So this is the previous model. Got it. Okay, great. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Like, so I, I already ran these this four loops before for five epochs, right? So this is my sixth epoch, if you want. Okay, Great. okay. Great, so, so then this is the representation, which is pretty accurate. Then. I was going to say maybe it's random, but no. It's no, 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 it's not. True. So the point is that, exactly. So if it would be random, all of this number would look exactly the same. Uh, well, roughly the same. Well, there would be like just random noise, right? And then that's why if you compute the the loss, which is the average over the, the batch of, you know, the, um, basically me you measure the entropy, you're going to get the highest entropy, uh, which is that number we compute before the uh, natural logarithm of 10. Yeah. So I, I, I love this vector because, uh, you know, I think a lot of my research is on self-supervised uh, learning, as you know, and um, these representations are like, you know, it's how do you make these, right? So these vectors. Um, and, you know, you can take this thing, probably do cosine similarity with the, uh, the rest of the data set and pull out the other four using this guy. Um, so, I don't know. It's pretty, uh, pretty interesting. Mm -hmm. All right. So, this was the argmax. Do we have the soft argmax? Let's try if we, if we actually exist in the... Uh, in Torch. It should be. <laughs> Detach. And then we have soft. Then they forgot the arg and it's going to be called max here. Let's see if it works. It doesn't work because we had to say which dimension we want to do this stuff. Uh, it's just one vector, so I don't know which dimension <laughs> it should be going. But it should be zero. Of course yeah. it's zero. It is one dimension only, so fine. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. And so this one tells you you have uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So you have 0 0.56 here. And then the last one is 0 0.43, right? So if I print these values, you have 0 0.56 and 0 0.42. Like if I do some, like, let's do something nicer, like uh, print a list where I have like my uh, probability. Let's do like this way. Uh, my probability with dot to f uh, for p in uh, this stuff. Oh, I, okay, fantastic. Uh, that's not what I meant. Oh, because I forgot the f. Okay, my bad. And you need a, uh, yeah, just f. There you go. All right, so this is what we see here, right? Uh, we see zero, 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 zero. We have 57, zero, 57, zero, 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 43, right? So I guess it's like with 57% uh, of pseudo probability, you have like the four and then 43% of pseudo probability, you get a nine. Uh, that, I mean, this is, this is pretty incredible because it's everything, it's, had, it's got such high confidence for like those. I mean, it's confused between the four and nine, but it's got such high confidence for these two. Everything yeah. else is just basically zero. Yeah, exactly. Right? The sum of 40, uh, 43 and 57 is actually one, right? So all these values here don't contribute uh, within these two first digits, right? In the final outcome. All right. So, oh yeah. So we actually had to compute the accuracy. Oh my God. I'm, I like my digression so much, right? So how do we compute the accuracy? So let's check what is Y, right? So print Y uh, size. So this one should be 32. Okay. So let's actually print the first four values of this guy here. Um, and we have like integers. And this was a four, right? So this was actually a four. And now our network actually says it's basically a four, right? Uh, I'm tempted to try to plot this, uh, this guy here. Oh, I think we can try to plot this one offline. Uh, so I'm going to be plotting... I'm gonna quit the 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 the, the, 
You want to you plot the numbers? Yeah, I want to, to, I want to plot this number uh, because right. I, I'm super curious to see how this number look. Okay, so I'm going to do this after I quit the interpreter here. Uh, but I want, let's finish first with the accuracy, right? Computation. Yeah. So we have that. Uh, we can do this uh, argmax, right? So if I print this guy here, right? Uh, no soft argmax, the argmax. See, I would so much want to reno rename this soft argmax. Oh my God, I'm so tempted. Uh, okay. Uh, so we can not choose the zero, so we can get the whole matrix, right? Uh, we do the argmax. Can I do this in a, a long dimension zero? I don't know if I can do this. And then I can print the first four values. Let's see if I actually can do this. Yes. No, but I, I made a mistake, right? Because, oh, yeah, this is the, the of course, 28, 23. I, I'm doing argmax in, a, in the dimension zero. I want to do argmax across the, the rows, right? So uh, actually we want to do along the other dimension, right? Okay. And you can see, right? It's four, three, zero, three, right? And so- 100% uh, accuracy. <laughs> yeah, so how do we compute that? I can do print this guy here, uh, dot, I think equal, no, EQ, no, was it, is it? Uh, yeah, try that. Let's try this one. Uh, this guy here. There's also torch dot equals, and then. Okay, let, let's try if it works. True, 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 okay. And then if I do this dot sum, I see if it works. Uh, dot sum. Is it like that? Oh, I can do mean, right? Mean. Uh oh. <laughs> I see. They they changed. It's okay. Something. Just do uh do that bool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, dot mean. I I can do dot floor, right? From dot float. There we go. So this is my accuracy. Okay, awesome. Uh, so I'm gonna just copy and paste this line. Uh, let's try actually for without the the uh, the first four four elements. So this is gonna be the whole accuracy for the um, for the whole thing, right? For the first for the whole batch, and this is the accuracy ninety. Okay. Um, I like this one liner so much that no one understands what they mean, but just who created them. Uh, <laughs> okay, so... It's like any, any mathematical computer program, like anything deep learning. It's always like the one math line of like all this stuff. <laughs> and then it just works. And, you know, when you write it, it makes sense to you. And then when you look at it later, you're like, I don't know. Yeah, I agree. Uh, append this guy. Uh, then we want accuracies to be at least... Well, that, that's especially evil. Just just write, just stick that statement into that print statement instead of saying like accuracy <laughs> equals that line. <laughs> okay. Uh, now because I want to compute the mean, right? So, and here's gonna be, uh, can I split this line? So I can, uh, let's do something like this. I want just to press that there. No. close this one here. Then I go here, I go to print. Oh, maybe I can do a multi. No, I don't want to. Do, I don't want to do multi-line. Let's see if I can do it this way. Uh, then we have end equal space. Um, okay. Uh, this is the torch training loss. Okay, and then I copy this stuff. Uh, and then I have the last one, which is going to be the accuracy training. Accuracy. 
And here we had the same with Acuracis. And that's it. Uh, and I copy this stuff. And I had the same here, right? Oh, oh. oh my God, what's happened? Okay, so I can do the same. And then here's gonna be, instead of training, it's gonna be validation. I cannot select multiple lines, okay. Validation. Validation. We need to get that thing. And we had to create one more. Oh my God, so much code repetition, I become stupid. Losses. Okay. I think it should be <laughs> everything. Okay. Uh, the last part, which is going to be basically me cutting the video from here, is going to be visualizing these four, uh, the first X sample here, right? So. Uh, I see you after I managed to plot this guy. So I quit the debugger. Okay. So let's 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 run this code with the accuracy. <laughs> and then I think I'm done for my side. Right? So yeah. I'm gonna just restart the network. So I generate the new network. I'm gonna be uh, getting the new optimizer. I'm going to train for five epochs and I have to remove the, the debugger because otherwise we can't train anything. So let's remove this guy. Uh, there we go. Aha. So after the first epoch, the average accuracy is 62. After the second epoch, the average accuracy is 87. 90%. It's interesting and how the, the validation accuracy went up before the training now. So uh, I guess, why is that happening? What, what um, is the question, sorry? So the training accuracy is 62, but somehow the validation accuracy for, oh, I see. This is an average accuracy of the full epoch. Yeah, yeah. Sense. so you can tell here this original, the initial loss was very, very high here. And the validation loss is way, way low. This, is, this happens because this validation loss uh, is computed after we train the first epoch. So this is the average across the whole first epoch. And this is after the first epoch, right? So this would be comparable to this guy. But this is the average of the second epoch, right? So this exactly. is like... Yeah, I mean, it would be very useful. I think we're printing at the end of an epoch, but you know, since an MNIST, we're trains in two seconds. Some data sets take days, weeks, right? So it's uh, usually useful to also print uh, the metrics as you're doing the training, um, going batch by batch, and then print the, maybe the last 10 or 100 values of that. Yeah, yeah. OK, that should be working. There we go. Yeah, as you mentioned, you may not see an actual speed up here because the batch size is too small and the data set is tiny. Yeah. So one, one thing we could do is increase the batch size and, and make it a 2000, 2048 or something like that. I mean, it'll throw off the learning rate and the accuracy as well on the metrics, but you'll see that you pick up much faster if you do that. But then you have to also do that for the CPU to be uh, fair in the comparison. But yeah, I mean, if you have the point, the, the point home is that if you're going to, between CPU and GPU, if um, if the data transfer is slower than the literal computations, you're not going to see a huge speed up. Right. Also, I don't necessarily want to go for a batch size that is actually larger than 10, to be honest. So given that we are training on um, classification, uh, classification problem of 10 classes, the optimal batch size, actually, the optimal batch size should be 10. Uh, such that we have one sample 
Okay, we should set this to 10, and then every batch should exactly have one sample per class. <clears throat> so this one gives us the maximum variety of data uh, points per batch, such that the gradient we're getting when computing a uh, backprop is the most representative of the, you know, the long loss landscape. Um, here we put it three times as much, uh, such because also the, the sampling is, I think it's random. So we, at least we make sure that all uh, digits are represented here. With a larger batch size, um, although it might go faster with the GPU, I don't think it's necessarily um, a good uh, option because again, you're gonna get a gradient that you just spend computation to get a gradient that it looks like basically the same. Usually data is highly redundant uh, and then you know getting such larger batches, uh, like in this case, getting larger batches would be um, uh, not quite advantageous in terms of improving the network uh, performance. And that was pretty much it. Thank you for listening and see you next time. Bye-bye.